Yeah. 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 So I'm very grateful to be here, actually. And uh, so uh, I got the energy, definitely. Uh, chants and chanters and everyone here <coughs> from UFD or non-UFD faculty. Uh, it's really great to be here. And I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to read the script. Uh, you might feel a bit <laughs> everywhere, OK? okay. So today, um, yeah. No, no. So today, I'm gonna address you with two of my identities. Uh, the first one is that uh, I am part of a human rights organization, whom, from they first expressed solidarity with the UFD censure uh, movement, which is Amnesty International. The second one is my student identity. Apparently, uh, that said, you will hear uh, two different tones in my speech. Uh, I'm going to start off with the uh, letter that was sent to the University of Toronto administration by Amnesty International. So Summer Bushkatil also mentioned about that, and I'm going to uh, be reading actually some parts of it. This letter was signed by uh, John Mariner, Director of Crisis Response at Amnesty International's International Secretariat, Kedeni Vyabandi, Secretary General of Amnesty International Canada, and Sam Doberly, head of Evidence Lab at Amnesty International's International Sector Secretariat. <clears throat> so I'm directly reading from the script. Dear President Gertler and Dean Brune. So I hope someone is recording this and uh, President and Administration will hear it again if they didn't uh, so far. Yeah. <laughs> so. In a second to report. Okay. The phone's ready. Yeah, okay. So we write to you on behalf of both Amnesty International Canada and Amnesty International's crisis response program to regretfully inform you that we are, with immediate effect, pausing our relationship with the University of Toronto Faculty of Law and its International Human Rights Law Program. We are taking this step in support of the Canadian Association of University Teachers, Teacher Council's decision to, uh, to censure the University of Toronto. Amnesty International has, through its Digital Verification Corps, and now more than four-year partnership with the IHRP. The DVC is an award-winning flagship program within the Crisis Response Program at Amnesty International's International Secretariat. It trains students from seven universities across the globe, including the University of, in University of Toronto. Seven universities and including the University of Toronto, and we missed this chance and unfortunately, uh, Amnesty International is not with the UFT Law and International Human Rights Program anymore. Shame. Shame. On the process and practice of, of open source research for human rights advocacy and accountability, the IHRP became a DVC partner in 2017 and has successfully contributed to a wide range of Amnesty research. Like the code, we are greatly concerned about the sequence of events that led to the Faculty of Law's decision not to appoint Dr. Valentina Azarova as IHRP director. Having read the report by retired Supreme Court just, uh, Judge of Can Canada, uh, retired Judge of Supreme Court of Canada, Thomas Cromwell, we are unable to take at face value the claim that the hire was frozen solely due to immigration issues rather than external influence from a major university donor critical of Dr. Azarova's academic work on Israel and Palestine. Shame. Shame. We regret that we have been placed in a position to suspend our relationship with the University of Toronto, the Faculty of Law and the IHRP until such time as the code censure has been lifted and a sustainable roadmap for the future of the IHRP has been put in place. As a student chapter of Amnesty International at the University of Toronto Scarborough, we call on the University of Toronto administration to take all the necessary steps that are going to ensure that the code censure is lifted and pro-Palestinian voices are not silenced at the University of Toronto. <laughs> Now the second part. Second part is the part that I'm speaking on my behalf. I am a student. I am learning. I am being taught. I want a better future for myself and for everyone. I am a student. I'm young. I'm impassionate when I need to be. 
I might be silent also when needed, but here and now, I won't be silent. <laughs> I won't be in my corner with live in peace mindset. Comfort has long left my soul since the day I started to feel the pains, struggles, screams, tears, and cries of innocent lives. I chose freedom over everything I held dear in this life. And now I am using my longtime friend, Courage, to fight for academic freedom at my university. <laughs> Courage is to shut up if need be, or to move heaven and earth when needed. Courage is to do when appropriate, or to stop at the right time. Courage is to stand still just in time, or to crawl, walk, and run when of which possible. The reason is one, the right is one, the correct is one. Among this oneness, the courageous is the one who bravely spares the words in the face of swinging handcuffs, who looks the tyrant in the eyes and holds in disrespect. Courage is the possession of a person with firmness and integrity. Courage is a mine, courage is mine. What I see here in this rally is what I don't see at the university administration. I see wisdom here. I see joyfulness here. Here I see proud faces. I see content souls here, and I see brave hearts here. Here I see change. I see change. I see change. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you.